Hi, and welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a new subscriber, welcome again. And old subscribers, thank you for coming back. Today, we're going to be doing the Country Cow, the Limiza. It can be worn as a wallet and or a clutch. It has a many options for straps, and it is a fun bag. A fun bag clutch slash wallet to make. It has everything that you need. It's a perfect on the go bag. And I think it's actually absolutely perfect for the upcoming season of spring. Today we're going to be making um, making one. I'm using all Kona cotton and using all the fabric um, inter interfacing that is recommended in this book. I do highly recommend you to use cotton first before you try to attempt to do vinyl, faux leather, or leather. So you can figure out what you can do to help reduce bulk in certain areas. Um, I'm going to be sewing all my 5550 and it's equivalent to like a Juki QVP mini, like a semi-industrial. It's a straight stitch machine. It doesn't have any walking feet or anything along those lines. I will be using a hump jumper on certain um, areas and I do recommend switching out needles when we get to the thicker bits. So without further ado, let's go down here. All right. So on the limiza, you you need to read the. I always recommend to read the pattern before you begin it, so you can understand and highlight things that you think you might have difficulties will with, and that someone can help you, like my like me, for um for visual learners. We're going to be making a crossbody strap out of webbing. It's recommended to have 60 inches. My recommendation also is if you're smaller or if you're fluffier and taller, make the straps according to your um, your size or the person's you're making size. I'm using a polyurethane because I couldn't find any cotton ones that I have. And I found some leftover um, scraps of waterproof canvas that I have put on the ends. Joe has a similar two with left bit left in scraps for cork and i think it's a really cute and clever idea a nice way to um a nice way to have a nice detail to your bag without actually having to i can't talk today having a nice detail to your bag without having to um like buy additional scrap ends so what we're going to do is we're going to take a tri glider and i'm going to feed it over and under. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a little XR box. Now you can use a rivet. A rivet will work really nicely because it helps with reinforcing. But if you're ever concerned about the the polyurethane or cotton weave and weft going a little wonky after um, you do that, sometimes that happens. You can poke a hole through something and the weft is like not acting right. Okay, I'm gonna put my bobbin in. Let's see, I'm gonna be using 40 wet thread I got from Waywack at Saba. And it's like this really pretty royal blue, maybe-ish color. Okay, and I'm going to pull my threads to the back. And I'm gonna just sew a little box, a little, Xbox, <laughs> but not an Xbox. All over the strap, back stitching well before the beginning and end. And when I stop, I need to make sure I put the needle down. That's a beautiful thing about domestic machines because sometimes you have the needle down when it stops feature and it's a great feature to have. And then I'm just going to draw, draw. I'm going to just sew a little X just for extra reinforcement. Now you don't have to do this. You could, there it in the pattern, they have it where they put two rivets in and it looks very high end, very classy and chic. trimming those threads. All right. And then I'm going to get my um, two connectors. Lobster class. I'm 
we're going to put those on. We're going to slide one through. Okay. I'm using connectors that I purchased from Emmeline Bags. They have a really beautiful antique brass, and I always have a tendency of going through them. I have bought some of Joe's antique before, and it's such a gorgeous color. So I'm going to have my triglider facing me. I'm going to feed one strap through, and I make sure that my strap is not crooked or adjusting wrong. I'm going to feed over and under the tri-glider and I just pull it through. I like to pull it through sometimes all the way through because in case if I do have it twisted, like it might just kind of twist it, then I can always un untwist it, bring it back through again and untwist it. Trust me, I, no matter how many times I think I've got this down pack that I'm not going to twist it, it always somehow oh always does. So I try to feed my hand through, keeping the strap as straight as possible. And then I feed it up. I want to make sure nothing's twisted. And through the tri glider. And nothing's twisted down on this end. So I'm going to go to the end of this and bring my silver class under and through, and I'm going to stitch this down using an X. And again, you don't have to stitch it down. You can just pop a couple rivets in it and it'll look really nice. You can do side by side or going up and down. And take your time. As I say that, I speed up. <laughs> and then you have your adjustable strap. I'm not going to be put away for right now and getting ready. And I like I like using webbing because it ha it's nice and strong. And it works out nice. I didn't, my bobbin is not wanting to cooperate with me today. And it just fell. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to turn to um, page eight. And it's right there in the <laughs> upper right hand corner. Um, page eight. And it gives us the standard seam allowance and what our top stitching and what our basing stitches are going to be right in the first paragraph. We're going to be getting putting together the main exterior flap. Um, let's see. Let's get these pieces. The main exterior. I'm going to grab my little handy dandy bucket. As you can tell, I also have my iron by me. Ironing is very crucial for the for this pattern. So I'm going to grab the flap purse first <laughs> and get the pattern pieces over here. And one, I have one, my exterior, and then my lining. And we're going to make markings up on page two. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my centers. find my center and then I'm going to measure up and make a mark on the crease I'm doing this on my lining I'm I'm going to have I have an exterior zipper that I want to use um, that that is going to show on the front of the flap so I'm making the marking now so that way I know where to put put the the magnet when I'm done. So we're going to take our 
interior and our lining. If this was going to be um, just a magnet inside the lining, you would put it in that mark and then we'll put it, or you can make your slits and then put it in afterwards as well. So I'm going to grab a few clips. I like to clip in a few different places. We are going to sew from the top all the way around and um, back to, to the other side of the top. We're going to backstitch well before the beginning and the end. And the beautiful thing about our uh, pattern piece, it, it's the exact measurement that we need for our seam allowance. So we could just follow it. Okay, everything's lined up nice and neat. And I'm using a 2.5 stitch length right now. And I'm just following the curve of the pattern piece. If you have to stop, stop with the needle down. Those threads. Let's see, I just have my pinking shears. Where did you go? I like to use pinking shears anytime there's a corner or um, a circle, a circular motion because it just helps thin out um, the bulk. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to pink around this. Do not cut into your stitches. Let's say by the off chance you accidentally do. Um, just go around the whole whole top again. One eighth of an inch above the area that you paint. Your flap will be a little bit smaller, but nobody will really notice. Okay. And when, before I always, uh, I before I I turn, I like to just hit it, uh, hit the, the, hit it with the iron to get the seam filled, and the steam actually makes it kind of pliable for a moment because it's nice and warm and all soft. See, it just kind of turns in easier because it's warm. That's what I've noticed, and um, I used a permanent pen the marking so that way I can see where it is and I'm going to now use um, something that's blunt not sharp and just go around the edges before I press it again all right so I'm going to press this hit it with some steam Press it again on this side. And I'm gonna move it to the side. We're gonna to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. I'm gonna move my other scissors over here to the side. We're gonna top stitch at one eighth of an inch. I like to back stitch, just lock in that stitch. One eighth of an inch is the in between the toe of my foot. I'm just following it, the curves, taking my time. Again, if you have to stop because like you're sneezing or you have to use the restroom or just because you're like, I've been holding my breath this whole time while I was top stitching. Just stop with the needle down, you'll be fine. Okay, we are done with that. So 
So we're going to install the magnet now. And like I said, I have a, a specialty magnet. It's, as you can see, I have like whole, the whole, um, the whole, uh, Star Wars theme. So I have a Star Wars magnet that I believe I got this one from Alchemats during the May 4th, which is coming up soon. They usually have some amazing Star Wars hardware. So, so what I get, what I do when I have a specialty map, especially one like this is I put that mark where I had with the permanent pen, I put that right there. And then what I'm going to do is now mark my fabric where I need to put screws in. So I'm just going to I bet my hole puncher's over there. <laughs> I'm going to grab my hole puncher and some fray check because I'm using cotton. Don't put the fray check over by the heat. <laughs> I'm saying this to myself, not more to you. <laughs> I'm going to punch holes. Sometimes with the cotton, I know my, um, my, Hole puncher does not want to cooperate. So I sometimes go through again on the other side just to help really punch out any areas that it's trying to be kind of finicky. You can also use a stiletto. Just to get out all those extras. Then I'm going to get some fray check and bet you bottom dollar I'm going to have to unclog it. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, not. Woohoo. Okay, so we're, I'm just playing the fray check around. That was uh, my whole entire project kick that just crashed to the floor. <laughs> It's okay. Then I'm going to take the front of this and I'm going to line up the holes and kind of just push my, my thumb and my index down on this. And I'm going to now take the mail portion and place it inside and I'm going to just push them out. Take my screwdriver. That had one screw connected to it. And I'm going to lightly screw in one side, just not all the way, until I get all three screws in. I notice if I screw it down too tight, then... It can the other holes can shift and then nothing lines up right for me. And don't you know twist until you get that nice turn. Don't keep going or you're gonna lock your screw in, like lock them and strip them. We don't want that. Let me get this off the floor. <laughs> that would help tremendously. Alright, so we have that in. You can add a drop of glue if you want. I don't. And here's why. If I make these for people and if I say I have to do some kind of um, repair or if I say someone's like, hey, I want the flap to be a little sturdier. If these are locked in with like super glue or whatever, it is really hard to get them out. Like almost impossible. And <laughs> then, then, I'm, then I get upset and then it's just like all bad down here. So we, we have our flap. We're going to put this to the side real quick. And then we're going to grab, um, we're going to grab our, one of our pattern pieces. Let me give you the pattern piece. Pattern piece 
L, one of the overlays. So you're going to open your overlay up. It's going to be fully open and you're going to fold it onto itself and iron. Um, what I did, I didn't use double sided tape. I used a glue stick because I was using woven and I put it on here and it helped keep, it helped kept the, um, the fabric down and it just has it. I haven't, I cut this wallet out a week ago and you don't see any really lifting. So then we're going to go and we're going to sew down one fourth of an inch down both sides of the stabilizer. Then I'm going to go down one fourth of an inch on the other side and this holds down the fabric as well and it's a nice decorative stitch as well. And I'm going to trim all these little threads. All right, so we have this all stitched down. We are going to be making some markings. We're going to grab one of our exterior pieces, our exterior front, which is pattern piece A. We're going to grab one of them and we're going to make some marks. And I'm going to grab a chalk pen. There's two sets of marks that are on step 14. And I'm just going to use a chalk pencil or a chalk pen. I like chalk because it's it just wipes off and it makes me not have to like iron something out and or I use an invisible an invisible one. Let's see and a half. All right. So we have that, we have our pieces marked. We are going to take our, I'm going to just mark the centers real quick inside that amount. Finding your centers and marking them help tremendously in the long run. It, sometimes I know it's, it could be tedious, but in the end, it's really worth it. All right, we're going to take some double-sided tape and we are going to go, go place this on the first line and we're going to ba um, base it to the machine. Now you, there, you can, do pens if you wish and or you can use double-sided tape. Double-sided tape is just a little bit easier. You can use one-eighth of an inch. You can use uh, one-fourth of an inch. Whatever you have on hand is handy. You can also take glue uh, and drizzle glue onto that just like one-fourth of an inch and then iron it on so it could stay in place. But the double-sided tape really does help a lot. So I'm marking the, I'm lining it up to each line. And I'm going to go ahead and base this down. Um, if my tells want to cooperate. I'm just going to make sure that it's on there and it doesn't move. And I always back stitch at the beginning and end just to lock in the stitch. And we're gonna trim the threads. <laughs> um this that this particular thread, this amount thread, it's like really thin and it's a neutral color, so sometimes it's just like hard for me to gather. Then we're going to 
going to make a, so a, we're going to put the strip that we just have, we're going to put it over here. Um, and then we're just going to find our centers. Again, centers are important. I'm just going to grab my chalk pen and have that there. And we're going to place this on the second line. And then again, there's a lot of double sided tape in this. So just be prepared. Just put this in the center. And we're going to, you don't need a lot. It just needs something to hold it in place while you stitch down. Put this on the second line. All right. All right. Then we're going to draw a box. And we're going to measure it from the sides. And make sure you go to the side of the main panel piece A and not the tails. It's supposed to be having a little extra room. You'll see why in just a moment. We're going to sew this box using a one eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And I backstitch. Um, this is a, a clutch or a wallet. I don't want something to fall out because I didn't lock in the stitches. Back such a couple stitches when I know I'm about to veer off. my little magnets picking up like everything all right so we have our stitches and then, okay we have all that in place and then now we're going to grab our three-fourths of an inch d-rings and i just had mine before everything came tumbling down. <laughs> yeah, everything just, I can't believe everything just fell like that, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Um, let me grab. If I can find it, if not, I'll pause and magically come back. <laughs> I can't believe everything fell like that though. I'll pause and come magically back. Okay, so we are going to take one of our D rings, rectangle rings, O rings, whatever you have, and we are going to thread it through this, uh, our underside, just like this on this side. We have measurements that are given on step 17 of where we're going to write this box, draw this box. So I'm going to bring this over to my sewing machine. And you can use double-sided tape if you want here. It will help if you can use glue and iron it on. We're going to draw this box, back stitch. We're gonna get as close as we can. And when we know it's gonna elevate a little bit because of the hardware, we're gonna use a hump jumper on the back. I'm 
gonna pivot, have it go across, and I know this is silly, but I'm gonna go one more time across for good measure. Sorry, my thread is not acting right in this machine. Like six seconds away of going to the other machine. I think it needs a good deep cleaning. And maybe some new oil. Get this thread so that it doesn't nest. All right, so I'm gonna go over back at this side. Actually, I'm going to go back on this side. It's cotton. That's a beautiful thing about cotton. Go across. And then we're going to go back down. And I'm just going to get my hump jumper and put it in the front so that the foot evens out. And lock that stitch in. While we have that all nice and neat, we're going to trim our threads. And we're going to grab some rivets. My machine is sounding like Darth Vader over here, just steaming up. Um, <laughs> and I'm like trying not to laugh. Um, so we have our rivets. I'm using, you can use small um, rivets, whatever rivets you pretty much have on hand. We're going to need a hole puncher and we're going to need a marking tool. We're going to put some rivets on either box side. I realize you guys can't see this. Hold on. And this is just, again, extra precautions to keep the straps. Okay. I'm going to punch some holes. Make sure that I, I reduce my hole punch because I made it bigger for the magnet. And we're going to get our male and female parts of our rivets. I'm just threading the male portion into the back of this. On all four holes. I keep, I promise you, I keep thinking I'm trimming this one thread that just does not want to go away. Get the female. Make two more females. And then we just get our rivet press or you, you have a handheld. This is a perfect time to use it too. I like using them every now and again because you can smash everything, take out frustration, anger. It's so good fun. <laughs> I have a rivet press that I have from Mika Samargo. It does a really good job there. They have really nice rivets and they have great customer service and it's a small mom and pop shop. But there's a lot of places you can get your uh, a rivet press at. You can get it from Cam Snaps, Emmeline Bags. There's just so many places. My handmade space has one. 
it's a great tool to have in your your workroom. All right, so we're gonna now grab um, our fusible interfacing um, main stabilizer K, and we're gonna put it on here. So we're going to do some measurements real quick to make sure that we align it properly. And I'm just gonna use a pen that you guys can see but if it accidentally bleed through, it will mesh. It will go perfectly with the fabric I have. It's a nice fine tip blue. When you're fusing this interface on, make sure you don't touch the iron to your magnet. It can demagnetize it and that would not be fun to repair. <laughs> So I'm going to put this in the, exactly where, in between the lines. You need to, I'm using um, Decaville Heavy. I did not have Peltex. So I'm using that in lieu of Peltex. I did make my first two with Peltex and I got, I must say, I love the way it turned out. And then I'm just going to fuse this in. Normally when I fuse something like this, I would leave it alone for a couple hours or overnight so that the, um, the adhesive property has time to uh, adhere. threads and I think it's on there pretty good I'm just making sure those sides always like to come up for me I'm gonna put this to the side and then I'm going to reposition it And we're going to fold this up and top stitch it down. So I'm going to iron this fold up. I actually, I, I put the rivets on too soon. You're supposed to put the rivets on after you put the interfacing. I made a mistake, I'm sorry, but either way, you're gonna work out. We're gonna top stitch this down at one eighth of an inch. This little crease part that we folded up. All right. That's all done on that side. Then you would put your rivets in. Um, now we're gonna do a little bit of math. We're going to measure from the magnet flap to where the magnet is. We're gonna grab our slip pocket. And this is like, so slip pocket C you're gonna need. This is a little bit of fun math. So what we're gonna do is one, you're gonna to need to find your center. Always find your center. Then two, we are supposed to measure three inches down to put our magnet, but we need to see exactly where our magnet is on here to the center of the, of the little bump. And let's see, mine is, let's see. Mine's just like five eighths away. So it would be three inches minus this, where this magnet needs to go. And it's, when I first did this, this is the part I was like, wait, what math? <laughs> no, 
So our originally our, our mark's supposed to be three inches. You're supposed to take to the top of the fold to where this little bump is. And mine's is six, eight. So we're gonna go three inches down. And then I'll put the mark. I realize that now that my fatal error is the fabric color. <laughs> where this is where the magnet needs to be now. So I'm going to grab this and get my exacto knife. I just had, there we go. And my washer. And I'm just going to, where I had the center, make marks to where I need to have my slits. Make my slits. And then grab fray check again. I like, I use fray check anytime I use cotton woven. I feel like it's really important. It comes, it likes to pour out fast. So just be a little wary of that. And then I'm just going to grab a piece of foam, just like a scrap piece. And then I'm just going to put the foam there. I didn't want it to be too bulky because this is this is not a very thick um, fabric, but I don't want it to rip through because magnets are sometimes super powerful and you just don't want to rip, have it rip through. And I'm going to be using some electrical tape so that way when there's friction, it won't wear on the fabric as fast. So I'm going to take the right side of this and I'm going to sew a three eighths of an inch. Sometimes if your machine doesn't have the markings, what I like to do is just grab a pin and draw the seam allowance and use that as my guide. Put a couple of clips, pens, whatever you need to have it stay together. Okay, and we're gonna sew it together. And we're going to to turn the pockets. Turn the pockets right sides out. We're going to top stitch. If you want, you can press this. But again, I don't like trying to get close to the magnet at all. We're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. And then we're going to take our other exterior piece, A, and we're going to match this side by side. And I'm going to grab some clips. And we're going to 
flip this up before we sew down the sides. And if it helps, grab some, you could just grab another clip and just have it flipped up. And then we're going to do a new pocket lining. We're gonna sew, we're gonna make a line that's one inches above. And we're gonna sew on that one inch line. I was like, Joe, what are you doing to your girl here? I am so confused, but it, it's actually quite brilliant. I just trust her process and Adam's process. It, it, it all works out in the end. So we go to, we're on page 12 now. And what we're going to do is trim, trim this pocket, but do not trim the exterior pocket piece. This is just to help reduce bulk. So we're going to trim the lining. but not the exterior pocket piece. Now we're going to fold this back down and we're gonna sew down the sides. Just the sides. like this because when you put your stuff in your pocket it's not going all the way down to the end of the bag i know that sounds weird but i hate when that happens i just i am not a fan of that all right so now we're going to draw like we did last time placements of the stabilizer this part is really important it gives the, your bag the shape and look that you are trying to you're trying to get from the powder piece cover so it's all right and let me just And these excess threads off and then we're going to grab our side piece and our side piece our main stabilizer k and place it where we just drew and again just be a little bit cautious about magnet and heat Apparently I still have threads everywhere. I'm on the cotton setting and it gives out some steam. And then I'm going to lift my pocket up and just sew from the inside. So that way I don't hit the magnet with my iron. And you know, do, do a test to see if all the sides are down. If they're not, then just go over that again. Okay, and then we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to fold up this seam allowance. Take your time, press. Normally I have my press on my cutting table and I just stand up, go back and forth, which is good because when you're stretching your legs because you're not sitting down continuously. So ironing is key in this pattern. And we press that down, we top stitch. Now we have our two exterior pieces. We are going to grab a lining piece. 
I'm gonna put these two on the side and then grab our lining piece. We need zipper pocket facing G. Lining piece F. All right. So we're going to mark. I'm going to use a, um, a chalk pen. Five eighths of an inch. down just using uh, something that can wipe off and the, from there we're going to put our zipper facings now the zipper facing it has the measurements on, on section 2 of on page 13 but if you actually have the pattern piece it's already drawn out for you so it just makes your life a little bit more easier I'm finding my centers for I've got like everything and then I'm just going to line that up to that line that we drew and grab a couple of pins. This is why cotton is amazing. And, <laughs> and we're going to uh, pin this in place real quick. Okay, we're going to sew around this box. Now, when I do this, I usually reduce my... my um, my stitch length to from a 2.5 to a two. And sometimes I even go lower around the, the corner of the box. Cause I magically cannot do, do the trick of just the front, the two lines and creating, I don't know what's wrong with me on that. But if you're like me, reducing your stitches will help tremendously. Move this pen, close this pen. I have a tendency, I'm like, why does my markers always dry out? And then I realize that uh, I never have my caps on. <laughs> okay. And back stitch. And then I'm going to increase my stitch length back to its original size so that way when I start sewing it does I'm not like why are the stitches so small <laughs> all right so from here I'm going to fold this in half and I'm just going to snip inside the box open this up I'm going to use my scissors and I'm gonna go all the way to almost the edge and then kind of make a Y getting as close as you can to this the stitches without actually cutting into them it could be tricky at first it does come better with practice. Um, if you accidentally like cut into your stitches, not a problem. Just go make a box again around it at using one eighth of an inch. And then that will become your new like seam gauge. Okay. So no, what I'd like to do with my, um, my pockets is I like to take it over to the iron and I like to go and press from this side, hit it with some, with some steam. This is before I turn it. It's kind of like prepping the bag to know that it's going to be in a different position. Just hit it. And then I do the sides too. 
Sorry, I'm using my... I should have brought my bigger mat. But alas, with me switching everything around in the room, I can't locate it and I wanted to get this video in as promised. Alright, so because of it being iron like that, now I could take it and just turn it. And it wants to naturally fold in on itself over here. So I'm just going to look at it at the front first. And then I'm going to get my iron. And from the front, I'm going to iron. And then I'm going to take this and uh, iron the other side. Bring it, come to the back, and I just finished that ironing job. And we have a nice, clean pocket ready for uh, zipper installation. So I'm using a size three. As you can tell, there's no interfacing on the zipper pocket, which helps tremendously. So we're going to one, I'm going to press this open so I can get rid of any ripples. You're going to sew right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper on both sides. And see, if you can see on the camera, look at how straight that is in that ripple. Sometimes a little bit of steam to your zippers. Look at that, all that ripple, none. So if you can so if you can steam your zippers, it does make a tremendous difference on how it looks. So let me explain what we're gonna do. You have your zip, you have your um, zipper pocket facing you, then you sew the right sides up, wrong sides of the zipper, sew it down. I'm using you use a one fourth of an inch, one eighth of an inch, whatever you it works for you. And then you're gonna do that to the other side. Once you have it done, you're going to hit it with the iron so it can stay nice and flat. And then we're going to use some double-sided tape. You can use one eighth of an inch. You can use um you can use one eighth of an inch, you can use uh one fourth or you also can use a glue stick. This is like the glue that you get from your when you're when they have like the kids back to school things. They also have it for sewers. I sometimes use this on the edges like this. I line my zipper up. Make sure that your zipper is going in the direction that you want. Line it up. And then I just press where the glue is, right? And then I'll take it over to my iron and I will set the glue with the iron. And it doesn't gum up your needles this way too. The, my favorite one is the kids one, the purple. And it, here's why. It, why it's purple is because it dries clear. So you can tell that the glue is still wet as long as it's purple. I see it's sticking. I'm just trying to now just adjust the side. And we have a zipper that is no, we don't need any um, zipper tape. I mean, DST, see, pretty cool. We're gonna go around this. We're gonna sew this box going all the way around. So the way we have it is the zipper is fully open like this. So that way we can sew around this this section. Now I sometimes like to go a smaller stitch length going around here too, because I know it is an area that is going to be getting a lot of work done to it. It's going to be opening and closing. So I, I go over a back stitch really well, the, um, the sides of the zipper. And I'm just going to move my zipper out of the way. I should have my needle down. And if you're going to adjust anything, make sure your needle's down. Just 
pieces go up and back stitch. We are done with this pocket. Well, this portion of the pocket. Then we're going to close this up. We're going to go up. We're going to go down, across, and up. So what I like to do, because this, there is a difference, there's like a, a little, like over a half inch difference, I'm going to cut them so they're flush. Because when you have, one side is going to be higher than the other because the zipper tape is like that. Now we're going to go up, down, um, down, across, and up. I like to get as close as I possibly can onto this triangle part because again, I'll backstitch over that. That is where the most tension is going to be. Let's do this. On this side, go up. And then we have our closure and I'm just going to trim this area where the zipper is, the extra zipper tape so that way it doesn't get caught up in anything later. All right, so we have a fully functional pocket, nice and lined, it looks nice. Then we're gonna grab now our wings. Our wings are on P pattern piece D. And what we're gonna do is you have mirror images. We're going to sew them together using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I like to draw on the lines where the interfacing is. One, one of your one wing should have interfacing where it's and it stops before the straight edge, and the other side should be no interfacing. Once you have sewn all of these three down, what you're going to need to do after that is trim before you turn. So I like pinking shears. Again, it evenly distributes the bulk. And then I just try to get in as close as I can without hitting any stitches and just remove a little bit of extra bulk those extras away we're going to turn this right sides out actually before i turn it i'm going to press it, just hit it with the iron one time um because again i feel like it everything presses everyone everything comes out a little bit better when it's nice and warm it's more pliable and it just turns easier to me and then i'm going to use a knot like a object just to get these corners a little bit more pointy without poking a hole through it because that, that's frustrating fixable but frustrating then i'm going to iron them iron the wing and after i iron i try to just Go back over, make sure I can poke everything out as best I could. All right, then we're going to top stitch from the bottom up the straight edge, the opening and across. Do not top stitch the angle. We're gonna do this at a 1 8 of an inch. So the bottom, Needle down would be good. We're gonna go up the straight edge to close it off. We're gonna trim. So we're gonna do that to the other pieces for pattern piece D. There, so, and all in all, you should have, you're going to be making four wings. And I already went the wrong way. <laughs> it happens. 
just think straight edge. So it's probably better to start at the top or where the straight edge is facing you. So that way you can, um, remember you need to close up the open gap. That's I'm just going to trim those threads. We have two more times. As my machine sounds like Darth Vader. My ironing machine. My ironing. Now it's eerily quiet. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, we're going to do this side now too and we'll be done. Now we're going to put these little wings away just for a moment and we're going to get our our card slots. Now the card slots whenever I do one I'm I always get super intimidated by them and it freaks me out. So I'm going to give you some tips that help me. So the card slots are are on Piece eye. Joe made this really, really simple. Um, so when you open up your card slots first, you're going to want to use a permanent marker. So, or like a pen or something that won't seep through. Like if you're going to use a pen like I did, don't do black. I would try to find a pen that's closer to this like seafoam green. Like a per like permanent markers come in all different kinds of colors. So in case it does seep through, it will blend effortlessly. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to mark your top, what you see right here. I have the top and then you're going to mark your bottom. Okay. So the most of the measurements, all the folding starts at the bottom. So you, there are the measurements go in order, but first you need to fold in a half an inch on both ends. So what I recommend, and this is what I did is you can draw one inch and fold it up to that. Or if you have a hemming, a hemming tool, you can put it at the half inch and iron it like I did. It helped me tremendously. Then when you start at the bottom, you're going to start with folding in on itself. Once I have the right measurement that fold in, I iron it. I ironed it. There are two measurements on this, on this card. What I, um, on this pattern piece, what I did is I took card stock and I made both measurements. So I made, let's say this one is three inches. That's not a measurement. Um, but I would make a card stock for three inches and the lower number one. So I could stick it in, iron it and keep going, stick it in, iron it and keep going. And it helped me out tremendously. And, or you can use again, a hemming ruler like this go on it and iron and hit it up. Once you iron back and forth, it goes like a, an accordion. You iron here, then you bring this down. You iron that, you bring this down. You iron, you iron, <laughs> and you iron some more. Then you have this beautiful card, um, credit card slot that is sim like real simplistic and yet then easy. Like I said, for me, um, having the card stock numbers, like one of the measurements is one and three fourths. So having one of these card starts, one and three fourths, and then the other card start, the other one, card stock, the other one, it helped me out a lot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch, top stitch, um, oh, it would help if my top thread was, uh, 
thread it, it would help tremendously. I'm going to top stitch these four card slots real quick using a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. If, <laughs> if my uh, machine, if I can focus on the hole and getting it in there. So yeah, the if you draw all the lines that are you're supposed to based off the measurements that are on page 15 section one and two it it's just folding it on itself so again um cardstock or like a hot ruler um helped out tremendously and this is why you cut thread so there you go. now you don't have to um stitch across for a decorative stitch at all it's it's purely optional it's based on personal preferences sometimes i like to sometimes i don't all right so and, it, and joe says that she actually prefers not to top stitchers so now we're going to find the center you can use your ruler, you can um, find your center, and then we're going to, everything matches up. I'm going to use a chalk pencil, and I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to flip the back of this card up like this, and we're going to sew all the way until the, um, until the top but not sew the back so it could be a slip pocket. Sometimes I'll, I'll back stitch just over each one of the lip areas so that way I can stuff it as many as cards as I can <laughs> without um, having like a lot of wear and tear. All right, so now you will have two of these you just can iron them once you're all done so that they can all the stitches set and they look all nice and neat. Make sure you trim any loose threads so that way. All right. So we have this. We're going to now grab one of our linings. I'm going to grab the one that doesn't have the zipper and we're going to measure up We're gonna measure up on one inch and you're going to place your card one of your card slots on there And I'm just going to take a couple of clips because as soon as I move this, you know, the measurement is going to be all skewed and messed up. So if I clip it now, I can do this. You're going to measure up and you're going to top stitch on your card slots, on the back of the card slots, one eighth of an inch. So the card slots look like this. You're just flipping it up. And then we're going to oh no i did this wrong 
I'm gonna unpick this. I apologize. I want. I don't want to show you how uh, wrong way. I want to show you the right way. I should have measured one. Put this the top part measuring one inch and then clip it in place and then sewn. But it's okay. This is why we have seam rippers and scissors because we all make mistakes. And again, cotton such a forgiving fabric. You want to make sure you do this the right way so that you don't have bulk when you're like a, a lot of bulk when you're doing it. Measurements on here are key. All right. I got it. All right. So what I'm supposed to do is measure from the one inch from this so measure one inch up, place this pocket like this right on top of it, the one inch mark, then, fl then flip it up. So what I'm going to do is right at the one inch mark, I'm going to put a clip, but I'm going to put it underneath where the last layer of fabric is. So that way I can flip this up. And now sew this bottom pocket at one eighth of an inch. So that way your slip pocket doesn't sink all the way down into your wallet. <laughs> now put this back down and then I'm going to stitch it all the way around, up, across and down. Across, down, up, and then down. <laughs> across and then up. Take your time. just going to trim threads and any excess like rogue hairs because you don't want it to be a part of your seam allowance and you don't want it to make a nest because it will all right so once we have that done we're going to take our side panel pieces that again those have no no interfacing on them. And grab them and I'm going to put a nice little logo here. I'm going to base this in place. So our side wings are, side accents are pattern piece J. I'm going to line these up. Oh, you can draw your measurement on here. I don't know about your machine, but my machine doesn't um, have a 3 8 of inch mark. So I always have to wind up drawing mines. And that's okay. I can also mark a tool, mark up area like I can take a magnetic area and just find three eighths of an inch by putting my ruler down. And now I have a seam allowance I can use. Make sure that your if you have directional print that it's going in the right direction. 
everything's lined up. Grab your threads, else. same thing making sure that these pieces are going the right directions all right I'm gonna iron this open ironing here is really important again it just helps flatten the seams helps the stitches stay together nice kind of shrinks it a little bit the stitching to lock it in and then we're going to top stitch before I top stitch I'm going to do this on the other side as well because we're going to repeat the same thing Without all the thread, I'm telling you, I'm like the thread queen. Inch up. And I'm just going to lift. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just make sure it's an even inch. Okay. We're going to sew this at one eighth of an inch down. around using one eighth of an inch or making sure your pocket is okay. those threads and extra furs yeah this green fabric I don't know where I got it but it frays incredibly a lot so three eighths of an inch side wings side and then we're going to press this open and then we're going to top stitch both pieces down stitch we're going to be top stitching on the wing part because that's where all the seams are pressed towards Okay. 
going to now um, grab one of the pattern pieces A and we're going to Pattern, pieces, pattern piece A has a dotted line. Okay, so now we're going to take pattern piece A and we're going to place it right on top of the panels that we just made and we're going to trim around. This is way, way, way easier on your cutting table and using a rotary. We're going to trim them. Make sure that 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 dotted line that's on pattern piece A is folded. I'm going to take my time trimming because I'm not at the cutting table. But if you're at a, cut, at, at a cutting table, it just, it goes by extremely fast. <laughs> all right. So we have that all squared away. We have our two pieces that are like that now. We're going to get the wings. We're going to place the wings on the top. And we're going to place the wings that are one, one inch above the bottom. So I'm going to grab some clips, measure these out. And I'm going to clip them in place. Making them as even as I can. I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. Listen to my machine go all dark fadery <laughs> get these wings on here So then we're going to base them in place. Oops, without destroying stuff in the process. Just gonna bring the threads over here to this side and then I'll trim them. Now, if you you're start if you're starting to see this take form, you understand why the designer said, "Hey, do it in cotton," because they're we're going through a lot of layers, and the bulkier it gets, the harder it sews evenly. So. I definitely want to try with like waterproof canvas, like designer one for the exterior, but I can see with all the ironing and everything, it can be um, a little bit more taxing and you would need to have a little bit more patience and all that jazz. <laughs> so then we're going to take this over. We're going to place linings 
right sides up curve up. We did that. Place right side lining panels together. We're going to sew along the bottom. Getting the flaps all lined up. And then I'm just going to measure. You can always put like uh, washi tape or something like that, that so you can have your measurements all nice and clean. We're going to sew right sides together. Back stitch well, beginning and end. We're almost done. I'm just trimming up those little threads, and then I'm going to press the side, the price, the, the seams open. Top stitch both of the side seams. Have that all stitched out. We're going to take our last piece of uh, pattern piece L. And we're going to sew so first I need to top stitch this at one fourth of an inch on both sides. I forgot to do it when I did the other one. So this part is really, really important. So on this, we're going to want to stitch this down on both edges, but you want to make sure the side that has the Peltex is up. If you don't, it's gonna, it's not going to be fun taking this back, back, up, back apart. So we're going to match the side seams. And base it one eighth of an inch. And then we're going to do that same thing on the other side. One eighth of an inch. I'm moving this out of the way. I know it, feel, it feels count, like you're not doing it right because you're like, why am I seeing this part? It all comes together, I promise. <laughs> We're going to then now take our exterior pieces 
and match them. So make sure you have your pocket positioned how you want. Like I want the zipper to be, okay, so. All right, so I'm going to hit it with some steam to flip it. So I'll just bring it over, kind of hover, hit it with some steam, hit it with some steam not trying to hit the magnet and then while it's pliable I'm just going to pull the pocket through pull it through and I'm just going to um, get my pointing turn, my, my pointing turner, my, something that I can get all things. Let's see. It looks like this area did not catch all of the stitching. So I'm going to bring this back and circle around it at one eighth of inch. It happens if you accidentally like cut into your, um, seam allowance it, it happens to me more than i like to say <laughs> but it's your it's fixable as long as you you catch it ahead of time looks good all right i'm gonna Give this a good press and then I'm going to bring this, well, I could bring this around now and press around it. When you bring this around, it, got, it automatically has a Peltex on that side. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna press. Gonna be doing a lot of pressing you <laughs> so just get become one with your iron and your iron becomes one with you <laughs> on this scenario so we're gonna put the iron aside for right now and we're going to base stitch not base we'll permanent stitch one eighth of an inch now you can use some double-sided tape if you wish to make sure it doesn't move you can use some glue which I usually, I'm going to probably use some glue. <laughs> I say I want to use glue, but I, I can't find it. So I'll use some double-sided tape. I had the Beacons bottle like right there. But when everything came crashing down, <laughs> just going to rub that on there. The wind is really ripping and roaring out there. Okay, press that. And we're going to sew one eighth of an inch down, down and across. Um, just down and just down both sides. And I'm going to back stitch well at the beginning and end. threads around on this side back stitch a couple stitches I always back stitch anywhere from two to three
Okay, and I ran out of bobbin. That's about right. <laughs> I first thought it was my dog asleep upstairs because I was like, wow, he is really snoring. I mean, what is going on? <laughs> but then I looked at the weather and I'm like, okay, well, we just have like a freak snowstorm. I guess this is normal. All, all good things. All the good things. <laughs> Let's see. He probably is snoring too, but it's the one. All right, and then we're gonna I'm gonna go back over that area that I ran out of bobbin with. One time, uh, my one of my curls got caught in the lever. Oh my gosh! I was like literally sewing my hair into the the bag. It was not, it was not a good look. <laughs> all right. So once we have this all sewed down, we're going to stitch all the way around. What we're going to do is we're going to want to not bang things. We're going to want to get this as nice and tight as you possibly can. Um, I went around what I did last time. Well, the last few times is I ironed it down. Then I clipped it. So that way it had, um, sorry, I'm looking to see what color I want to have on the bottom and the top. I'm going to put a blue bobbin so I can sew from the wings up. So I have, it's like, trusting your bobbin at this point and your top thread and your tension. So like test it out on a couple pieces of fabric to see if it's like the stitching you like and all that. So what I did last time is I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to press I'm going to press these in on himself. Do the same thing on this side. A lot of pressing, I know. It's not a bad thing. It's going to make your back look super professional. And it helps keep everything in line. So what I'm going to do is one clip, pull this nice and taut where the linings with the lining and the exteriors with the exterior. And what you could do is after you're done clipping, just flip it to its side and see like is there an area that's showing a little too much of the lining that's the area you need to pull in Ooh, sorry for the clumping that magnet's heavy trimming threads wrong way all right now you could top stitch from here like this, or you can top stitch from like this way. It's really up to you. I'm going to trust my machine and I'm going to start in the middle so I can back stitch. Mm -hmm. 
beginning. Some areas are going to get thicker than others. Take, make sure you just put your needle down and just be a little bit patient. You might need to swap out to a 116 needle. Increase your stitch length if needed. I'm at a 3.5 and I'm just putting the needle down and tucking in that wing a little bit more. Use a hump jumper if needed as well. Needle down, if you have to stop. Make sure you're breathing. It's really easy not to breathe. <laughs> I'm going to put the needle down because I'm going to tuck in this wing a little bit more. Back stitch and trimming up stitches, not trimming up stitches, strip the threads. All right, then we're going to take our wings and we're going to put them together. We're going to line these bad boys up. going to sew them at one eighth of an inch back stitch really well at the beginning and in <laughs> if this machine wants to work with me today One side down. Just remember to trim up those threads. Um, I'm so used to burning and melting threads that sometimes I forget. Uh, you can't really do that on cotton. <laughs> I mean, you could, but do you want to accidentally catch your project on fire? I mean, it happens so easy, especially when we're using glue and stuff. <laughs> And you can, if you need to, you can use a stiletto and lube your finger to hold down the, just the bottom edges so that it could be a little bit easier for you to sew. 
in theory. <laughs> Trim up those threads. We're going to flip this right sides out and trim up those threads. Man, I have some serious threads in this bag. Remove rogue threads. <laughs> and kind of just like finger press. Oh my God, this is so cute. <laughs> All right, so what I do here, yeah, I made a weird awkward sound. <laughs> what I do from here is I, I do this just to give it a, a, its last little oomph. I like to press it like where it's gonna have its false bottom. So that way it can stay in that position. Like, press around the magnet, not on the magnet. Pressing really, really helps on this, on this bag. And then I'm just going to get this extra crispy here. <laughs> All right. Well, oops, let me not burn my thing. Grab my cute little the strap, the the strap they have too for uh, the wristlet is really cute. Come on, how cute is this? All right, so we have our nice little Limaza wallet. We have a magnetic closure. When you open it up, you have 12 card slots, two slip pockets, and a zipper pocket. This bag, and you have a slip pocket in the front. This bag is unbelievably cute. Um, I would use all cotton. Um, do I think you could possibly use other materials? Without testing them, I can say I think waterproof canvas can help. What the issue is, is that we put in a fusible interfacing um, on both exterior pieces A. So what I think you could do is instead of fusing it, because that that the back of the waterproof canvas is the one that has a plastic, maybe use thick double-sided tape or glue and put a book over it and walk away for a few hours and then do it that way. It could be done, um, but you go over a lot of uh, bulk. So it's really important to follow the stabilization and interfacing guidelines so that you can achieve a really cute little clutch. Um, I, I do apologize for if it seems choppy. I did record it in one go, but the cameras kept blowing out because of the wind. But I think I got everything pretty much intact. This bag does come together pretty easily. It doesn't have a lot of components and you have the opportunity to make this into some magnificent, magnificent stuff. It's an absolutely gorgeous wallet um, or clutch or just bag, spring bag, I'm going to the, the market or the fair and have everything in here and I believe it can hold um it help it help it holds my phone which is the galaxy fold and that's a pretty big phone it holds it really nicely you can do the clutch part the clutch wristlet which I actually think is genius she has a separate pattern piece called I think it's powder piece in if I'm not mistaken do I have it right yeah it's powder piece in it's a very unique shape and by doing that pattern piece, it can um, make a very sturdy wristlet. So I actually think it's genius. You can do a lot of different things with this. You can, if you put clips on the, at, uh, instead of a three, three fourths of an inch hardware, you can actually maybe have it clipped to your belt, like a belt waist thing. So just think of different options. This is really cute, very fun, very flirty and, just 
easy to fun to put together, domestic friendly. And I do think you could try some other um, materials, but you would need to know how to modify it to so that you don't ruin the plastic or um, the vinyl or whatever you use. I definitely think cork can be done with this. So all in all, I really like this pattern. I hope you do. I'm going to put a picture at the end of this pattern, uh, the back of this video so you can see it. And as well as the thumbnail will have it. I appreciate you so much for coming here and doing this wallet with me, clutch wallet, clutch bag <laughs> with me. And if you have any questions in reference to it, please leave a comment down below. Um, I will put links to everything non-affiliate on the description side. If you're like, oh, Shinova, I want to do something so special for you. I want to buy you a cup of coffee. I'll put my Kofi link that's also in the description box and it will be also the first comment inside um, this video. So until I see you again, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and happy sewing. Goodbye.